Good morning everyone and welcome to the SLC webinar for today. Um, today we're going to look at IELTS writing and how you can structure your paragraph. So before we start, a couple of pieces of information about um, how to answer questions. Throughout the webinar, I will be asking for your ideas um, on the topics that we'll be discussing. So I'd like you to write your ideas into the chat box while uh, we're discussing during the webinar. Please make sure that when you write your ideas in the chat box, that you use, you make sure everyone is ticked, not just panelists, so that we can all hear and share our ideas together. And at the end, we'll have time for questions, um, and we can use either the chat box or the question and answer um, tab on the toolbar. So let's get started. So we're going to look at um, different parts of paragraphs today. So we're going to look at what is a paragraph, what are main ideas, what are supporting ideas, and we're going to look at writing a concluding sentence. So the first question we have today is what is a paragraph? So I'd like to get your ideas on this. Um, can you please write into the chat box what do you think are the essential ingredients of a paragraph? What should every paragraph contain? Write your ideas into the chat box. Good, so we've got an I some ideas coming through here. We've got, um, from Alex, we've got main topic. Farhad, com, uh, complete sentences. Okay, good. So we have ideas and supporting ideas like examples. Good, so you've all got the right ID, idea here. So the essential ingredients of a paragraph are a main idea. So this is described either as a main idea or a topic sentence. Supporting sentences, so sentences to give reasons or examples for your main idea. And it's a good idea to include a concluding sentence as well. A concluding sentence will wrap up your paragraph, um, remind the reader and examiner of your main idea, and perhaps lead on to the next paragraph. Now, when you uh, study IELTS writing, you'll find that there are different types of paragraph depending on the essay question and essay type. What we're looking at today, as it says here, are the essential ingredients. So all paragraphs should have at least one main idea, supporting ideas and a concluding sentence. Now, why, are para why is paragraph structure so important in IELTS writing? So paragraph structure is important so that you can show your examiners clear ideas. And this is part of the assessment for IELTS writing task two. Um, if you have clear ideas that are easy to understand and read, then you will get um, a band six or seven uh, for task response. Um, paragraph structure is important for the organization of your essay. So it's the organization of your whole essay, how each paragraph fits together, but also how each paragraph is organized within itself. And this uh, is graded on coherence and cohesion. Um, you are also graded on development and support. So as part of task response, the examiner is looking for how do you develop and support your main ideas for each paragraph. Now let's move on to the next part, which is what is a main idea? So a main idea answers the essay question or questions and will often show your position or your opinion. And today, the essay question that we're going to use to practice is what are the advantages and disadvantages for children of watching television? We're going to use this essay title to practice finding main ideas. Now, we have some examples here. Three main ideas, A, B, and C. 
I would like you to read these main ideas and decide which one do you think is best and why. Write your ideas in the chat box. Okay, so our general consensus is B is the best answer, which is correct. Now, that means that there are problems with A and C. So I'd like you to write into the chat box, why do you think A is not a good topic sentence? Good, so we've got some good ideas coming in here from Jun Cesar. It talks about reasons, not advantages. Alex says there's not enough information. And Geraldine says the task is asking for advantages and disadvantages, not reasons. So you're all right. Overall, A um, is too vague. Um, and it also doesn't answer the question that is being asked. Now, what's the problem with C? Okay, we've got some ideas coming in here. Alex thinks it's not organised. Jared thinks that it's more like a supporting idea. It sounds like a recommendation. Good. So the other thing to take into consideration is that this question specifically asks about children. And in sentence C, there isn't any information about children. And perhaps too many details, and perhaps it would be better as a supporting idea. So it's not relevant to children. It's an interesting point, but not directly answering the question enough. Okay. Now, um, on the other uh, side of our essay question, we have disadvantages. So I'd like you to write in the chat box some of your ideas. What do you think one of the main drawbacks for children of watching television is? Write your ideas into the chat box. All right, let's think of some ideas here. So we've got one advantage is the educational value. What disadvantage can you think of for children watching television? Write your ideas into the chat box. Good, so from Geraldine, we've got less social contact with other children. So social isolation might be a problem. Great, what else can you think of?
And another idea from Geraldine, children might see violence, which is not appropriate to their age. So Geraldine, you share the same idea as I did. One of the main back drawbacks of uh, children for children of watching television that it may cause violent behavior. And we have another main point from Kling here that children can have uh, health problems such as poor eyesight. So we've got two topic sentences, two main ideas that directly answer the question, advantages and disadvantages for children of watching television. Now let's go on and have a look at extending the main idea. So we have our main idea. One of the main benefits for children of watching television is the educational value. However, we need to um, ask ourselves some questions to extend and support this main idea. How? How is it possible for television to have educational value? What is it about television that can help children learn and develop? So let's have a look at the example that we've got here. So the example that we've chosen today, one of the main benefits for children of watching television is the educational value. If programs with a specific learning point are chosen, children can in fact learn a great deal from viewing television programs. So we've given more information about the topic as to why we think television has an educational value. Okay. Now, going back to our disadvantages idea, our disadvantages idea is uh, watching television may cause violent behavior in children. Now, again, we have this question to ask ourselves. How can television cause children to become violent? So um, we've touched on this idea with Geraldine, who says that children might see violence, which is not appropriate to their age. I'd like to get some more ideas on this. How do you think television can cause children to become violent? Write your ideas in the chat box. So what is it about television that can cause children to become violent? Okay, so we've got um, an answer from Ruben. Um, if children are shown programs that are not screened or filtered, they may see something that is age inappropriate and can, can cause violence. Okay, so the idea that we have here, okay, we've got um, an idea from Alex here. Um, okay, so when children watch television, um, what they watch appears to be normal to them. So if they see a fight scene, maybe they would then start fighting in real life, not knowing the difference between right and, and wrong. Okay, and um, we have an idea from Jin Cesar about um, television shows violent, violent behavior, which then children think can become socially acceptable. Some great vocabulary today. And also sometimes they can imitate these programs. So these are all similar ideas to the ones that we had today. So a major drawback for children of watching television is that it may cause violent behavior. During their formative years, children learn through imitating what they see. As if a child is exposed to violent images during this period, they might fight with their peers. So this is one example of how you can add more information and your ideas were similar. So you might 
add some slightly different points um, here. So we have got a main idea for one advantage, one disadvantage, and we have extended this to explain and give more details about what exactly we mean. So in the next part of our paragraph, we need to look at supporting ideas. Now, our supporting ideas need to support the main point and give either reasons or examples. So this is our sentence so far. Um, children can learn a great deal from viewing television programs which have a specific learning point. Now, at this point, we need to ask ourselves some questions. What kind of programs are educational? Is there a specific program that you know about that is educational? Um, how? So what is it about this program or this type of program that makes it educational? Um, and can you think of any specific countries or cities or um, examples where this is affected or involved? Um, so let's have a look at the example of the advantage together and then I'm going to ask you to think more about some of the disadvantages. So here the example that we have is take secondary schools and as an example in my country in the UK educators use video or TV programs to help students learn in subjects such as media studies Students may study technical production, script writing, or filming skills. So the example we have here is um, specific to a country, and it's specific to a situation. Um, it's not specific to the type of program, but it's extending the point and supporting the main idea that um, television can be educational. So let's have a look at the disadvantage, and I'd like to hear your ideas for the disadvantages. So we have got television may cause violent behavior. Uh, children may imitate what they see, and this may cause fighting. These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves when we're thinking about specific uh, supporting ideas. Is there a specific program that you know of that has led to violence with children? Are there any specific incidences that you know of involving children and violence on television? And again, which countries are affected or involved? So I'd like you to write your ideas into the chat box. So finish the sentence, take as an example and explain to us what you mean. Give us a supporting idea for um, the, the main idea that watching television may cause violent behavior. Write your ideas in the chat box, please. So what examples can you think of, some supporting examples or supporting sentences um, uh, to show that um, television, watching television may cause violence among children?
Okay, so we have an example from Geraldine about extrajudicial killings. So um, seeing violence in the news could possibly affect um, the mind of children, so it could have psychological effects. Okay, and uh, we have an example from Jun Cesar about um, cases of domestic violence, which can then that have been viewed on television, which can then affect uh, people in later life. So we've got a follow-on idea from children to adults and the long-term effects there. Okay, so the example that we have here is take, here we have a specific example of a type or specific program, which is another way to support your um, argument. So we have take Batman, uh, cartoons as an example although the pervading message may be positive the cartoon contains fight scenes which be, can be construed as violent so we've got a particular example here okay so we've built up our sentence from main idea extra information and supporting ideas in this case which are examples um, and in order to finish our sentence it's a good idea to have a concluding sentence to our paragraph so um, a what is a concluding sentence a concluding sentence wraps up your paragraph and it reminds the reader or the examiner of your main idea it's important because it creates cohesion in your paragraph structure and it also creates cohesion uh, throughout your essay so each idea and each paragraph are linked to each other creating a cohesive essay now we have got three concluding sentences for our advantages paragraph a b and c I'd like you to have a look at these three paragraphs and decide which one do you think is best a b or c Write to your ideas in the chat box. Okay, so we've got a couple of ideas. Most people have chosen C, which is correct. Um, so what is the problem with A? Why is A not a good concluding sentence? Good, Jun Cesar has uh, got the specific idea here. It's the repetition of the words. So it's not paraphrase, it's just a repetition of the main idea. So in a concluding sentence, make sure that you choose different words and don't just repeat the same idea uh, that you have in your topic sentence. Um, and what is the problem with B? Good, so Jun says uh, um, it's ankling, it's too vague, it's too general, it's not about the advantages and disadvantages, um, and it doesn't link well enough with our main, the main idea from our paragraph. So it's too general. So um, in C, we have a linking word to show us that it's the um, concluding sentence and we've paraphrased and reworded it and reminded the reader of our main point. So let's put all of those ideas together and we have two full paragraphs ready for an advantages, disadvantages essay.
Okay, so we've had a chance to read our two paragraphs and advantages and disadvantages. So let's go to um, a summary of um, the important points when you're writing a paragraph. So a main idea or, a, or topic sentences should answer the question directly. It's really important to always look back at the essay question to make sure each topic sentence is um, relevant. It should show your opinion on the topic. Now, as we've seen, this doesn't need to be expressed with phrases like I believe and I think so overtly, but your opinion does need to be clear in the topic sentence. Um, your topic sentence should be clear and easy to understand, and it should highlight the main idea of the paragraph. Your supporting ideas should be specific. Um, if your supporting ideas are too general or too vague, you may not achieve a band seven. They should support the main point. Um, one of the issues that comes up with essay writing in task two is that there is a confusion between main points and supporting ideas. You need to have a clear idea of what your main point is and see the difference between main ideas and supporting ideas. Usually, the supporting ideas come after the main idea or topic sentence. You may find in academic reading that the topic sentence actually comes towards the end of a paragraph. However, the main aim in your IELTS task to writing is to make <clears throat> your ideas easy to understand and clear for the examiner. So it's a good idea to start with the main idea and follow it with supporting ideas. A concluding sentence should remind the reader or the examiner of the main point, should not be copied from the topic sentence, use synonyms or paraphrasing, and it's a good idea to use a linking device to show that this is your concluding sentence. So that's the summary of how to structure good paragraphs, um, and we have some time for questions and answers. So if you have any questions on the topic of writing paragraphs or paragraph structure, write them into the chat box or write them into the question and answer section in the toolbar at the top. And we'll do our best to answer them. So Jun says, I was asking, is it okay to have just one main idea in each paragraph? Yes, it is. One of the features of a band seven is that there is a clear central topic to each paragraph. Depending on the type of essay and depending on the essay structure you follow, um, you may have more than one idea per paragraph. But as I say, it depends on the type of essay you're writing. You may also find that you write um, concessions in your paragraphs. So you have a main idea, you then refute it with a different main idea and then restate your main idea to support your position. So it depends on the essay type and it depends on the structure that you choose. But in the IELTS, um, writing marking criteria. One of the specific criteria is that there is a clear central topic per paragraph. So the danger of writing too many sent main ideas is that it may be confusing for the examiner or the reader. And another question from Jun Cesar, which types of task two essay should have two main ideas. Um, again, it really depends, but one of the more common ones that might have more than two ideas would be an opinion essay. So you might decide to include two main ideas in a paragraph in an opinion essay. And a question from Geraldine about a problem solution essay is it necessary to write no less than two problems and solutions so in a problem solution essay it's a good idea yes Geraldine it's a good idea to have a minimum of two 
problems with the corresponding solutions. Um, depending on your ideas and depending on the topic, a minimum of two is a good idea, possibly three um, problems and their corresponding solutions. So Geraldine, in an open task, so in an open task, is it just discussing the problem? So I think uh, you mean perhaps an opinion essay. So an opinion essay will present you with an opinion and it's your task to discuss the opinion. You will often be asked if you agree or disagree with a certain point um, and in which case you have a choice you can either present an opinion essay discussing uh, one main side so for example the re the main reasons why you disagree with a point or you can present a balanced argument essay in which you present both sides of the arguments arguments for and arguments against the view presented in the um, essay task. Okay, so a question from Alex. In an opinion essay, is it okay to have two paragraphs to agree and then one to disagree for a balance? Yes, it is. Um, depending on the um, topic, you might decide that you have, uh, you agree more than you disagree, in which case you have two paragraphs to agree and one to disagree. Um, or you might decide you disagree more, in which case it would be the other way around. Okay, and the question from Geraldine is, if you have an opinion essay, can you only discuss one side? Um, if you have an opinion essay and you have a very strong opinion, um, you will not lose marks for only discussing one side. However, it is always a good idea to present a concession argument or a refuting argument. Now, this um, means that it will strengthen your own argument for example you'd say in my opinion i agree other people disagree however i don't think they're right because so it's a good idea to present both sides but if you have a very strong opinion and you only want to discuss one side in an opinion essay then you will not lose marks for that All right. Well, thank you very much for attending today and thank you very much for your ideas and asking uh, lots of questions at the end. Um, we will be posting our webinar onto YouTube um, and I look forward to seeing you all in our next webinar in a couple of weeks.